She was fr frightened. So he had a stare? Yes. That made a glare. you frightened? Yes, yes, yes. And a grin too, really. Um, you know, just the way he'd grin at you too. He threatened to kill you? Yes. In less than an hour on Sunday afternoon, Martin Bryant won a place in the pages of infamy. In common with others charged with committing mass murder, his life was on one hand unexceptional, on the other completely bizarre. He actually used to sleep with a pig during the day. He'd sleep with a pig? Yeah. A pig weighed about 120 pounds, live weight. The pig was obviously living inside. In the house? In the house. In his words was he was swearing that pig pissed on me while he was asleep. The whole house was full of animals, probably 30 or 40 cats and dogs, as many birds crammed into a house. Martin's good fortune while it lasted was to find a wealthy patron, one of the many heirs to the Tattersall lottery fortune. Helen Harvey regarded him as a surrogate son, my loyal friend, she called him, and left him everything in her will when she died in 1992. This rambling house in the inner Hobart suburb of Newtown and the farm at Copping, north of Port Arthur, where the Featherstons were the neighbours. They remember her as a kindly eccentric, Martin, someone to be avoided. We went out along the, the driveway. Martin was behind us. Um, we didn't know that he was there until he was speaking. He said, don't ever come here again or I'll shoot you. Don't ever come here again or I'll, I'll shoot, shoot you. I'll shoot you, yeah. Did you feel more comfortable having your guns with this bloke living next door to you? I went out and bought a gun that I would knew would equal whatever he had. You did? Yes. And your motive in doing that was? Just in case I ever had to use it. A tense standoff ensued, with the Featherstones convinced Martin was prowling their property at night. I, I try not to let the kids know that the fellow was out here every night. I found footprints everywhere. Footprints uh, in your yard? All around on my property, mm. because I'd recently ploughed it. My dogs were being let off. Uh, my mother had knocks on the door and there was someone walking around the house, she wasn't sleeping. I told him I'd had enough. And the next sort of clearish night I could see in the dark, I would go out and hunt him down. But eccentric and unreasonable behaviour was one thing. The manner of Helen Harvey's death in a car accident left the Featherstons deeply unsettled. Because we'd constantly hear where she'd run off the road, Martin had pulled her wheel, my brother had to pull her on the road, went to a ditch, and she actually told us that Martin had this bad habit, just out of the blue, grabbing the steering wheel and wrenching on it, and she'd run off the road. That's why she only ever done about 30 mile an hour. Because she didn't know when the kids when, sitting next to her would when reach he, for the wheel. When Martin, the normal Martin, would turn into a, a supposed ki a kid that would actually wrench on the wheel, yeah. Do you think that that's what happened on the day of that accident? Oh, I believe so. You do? Yes. Martin was badly injured, but when he recovered, found himself a wealthy man, for Helen's bequest had set him up for life. His father joined him on the farm. Just a few months later, his body was found in a dam. The police accepted that he'd taken his own life. He was found by divers. Divers come down from the police academy. He was uh, supposedly found with a diver's lead belt around his neck. And what, what was Martin's response to his father's death? As if it never happened. Eventually, Martin decided to sell the farm and move to the house in Hobart. To the Featherstones, it was good riddance. We know from the weekend's events what appalling firepower he had. But when he lived next door to you, did he have any weapons? Yes, because I heard shots at different time, times over there. I'd go to work in the morning, wondering where the 
Martin had come over during the day and probably blow my family away, you know. You did worry about that at the time? Oh, definitely. But now, in a truly appalling sense, Martin Bryant has returned to haunt the rural community he left behind a year ago. Just what demons possessed him is a source of wonder way beyond this normally tranquil backwater. But in the wake of the killings here, the locals are in no mood for a debate about gun control. My first thoughts when I seen this horrible thing, when I get home, I'm gonna burn all my guns. Like right to protect your family. I, I believe everyone's got should have the right to protect their family. And if that means taking up arms against someone, well, that's it. The trophies on the Featherstone's walls are symbols of a gun culture that pervades rural Tasmania and no doubt fueled Martin Bryant's own obsession. He certainly turned his back on the comfortable life his benefactor had envisaged for him. A provision of Helen Harvey's will is that he be buried in the same grave as her in the Cornelian Bay Cemetery on the outskirts of Hobart. But the families of his victims will never rest in peace. Tonight, they're meeting in this small community hall near the massacre site to begin the long recovery from what happened at Port Arthur. 